Hi everyone, welcome to another chapter of Matilda. This is our last chapter for this week. So today we are going to read a chapter called The First Miracle. Ooh, now, let's wonder, I wonder what that's going to be about. What do you think a miracle is? Talk to someone in your house about that. Let's get started. Matilda sat down at her desk. The trunchbull seated herself behind the teacher's table. It was the first time she'd sat down during the lesson. She reached out her hand and took hold of her water jug, still holding the jug by the handle and not lifting it yet. Um, she said, I have never been able to understand why small children are so disgusting. Well, they are the bane of my life. They are like insects. They should be got rid of as early as possible. We get rid of flies with fly spray and hanging um, about fly paper. I've often thought of inventing a spray to get rid of small children. How splendid it would be to walk into this classroom with a gigantic spray gun in my hands and start pumping it. Or better still, to have some huge strips of firm um, sticky paper. I would hang them all around the school and you would all get stuck in them and that would be the end of it. Wouldn't that be a good idea, Miss Honey? If it's meant to be a joke, headmistress, I don't think it's a very funny one, Miss Honey said from the back of the class. Ah, uh, well, you wouldn't, would you, Miss Honey? The trunch horse said, and it's not meant to be a joke. My idea of a perfect school, Miss Honey, is one where there's no children in it at all. These days I shall start up, one of these days I shall start up a school like that, and I think it will be very successful. The woman's mad, Miss Honey kept telling herself. She's round the twist. She'll be one of those who ought to be get rid of. The trunch ball now lifted the blue porcelain water jug and poured some water into her glass. And suddenly, with the water, came out a long, slimy, straight newt, straight into the glass. Plop! The trunch ball let out a yell and leapt off the chair and a throw of firecracker had gone underneath her. And now the children who also saw the long, thin, slimy, yellow bellied lizard creature twisting and turning in the glass. They squirmed and jumped as, about as well, shouting, what is it? Oh, it's disgusting. It's a snake. It's a baby crocodile. It's an alligator. Look out, Miss Trunchbull, cried Lavender. Lavender, I bet it bites. The trunch ball, this mighty female giant, stood there in her green breeches, quivering like a blancmange. She was especially furious that someone had successfully um, succeeded in making her jump and yell like that, because she prided on herself on being on her toughness. She stared at the creature, twisting and wriggling in the glass. Curious enough, she'd never seen a newt before. Natural history was not her strong point. She hadn't had the faintest idea what this thing was. It certainly looked like an extremely unpleasant. Extremely unpleasant. Slowly, she sat down in her chair. She looked at this um, moment. She looked at this moment more terrified than ever before. The fires of fury and hatred were smouldering in her black, small black eyes. Matilda, she barked. Stand up. Who me? Matilda said. What have I done? Stand up, you disgusting little cockroach. I haven't done anything, Miss Trunchbull. Honestly, I haven't. I haven't seen that slimy thing before. Stand up at once, you filthy little maggot. Reluctantly, Matilda got on to her feet. She was in the second row. Lavender was in the row behind her, feeling a bit guilty. She hadn't intended to get her friend into trouble. On the other hand, she'd certainly not given, um, not going to own up. You're a vile, repulsive, repellent, malicious little brute, the trunch bull was shouting. You are not to fit in the school. You ought to be behind bars. That's what you are, ought to be. I shall have drummed out this, I should have drummed out and this establishment in utter disgrace. I shall have the prefects chase you down the corridor and out of the front door with the hockey sticks. I shall have the staff escort you home under guard, armed guard. And then I shall make sure that you are sent to the reformation for a delinquent girls for a minimum of 40 years. The trunch ball was in such a rage that her face was taken a boiled colour and a little flecks of froth were gathering at the corners of her mouth. But she was not the only one who was losing her cool. Matilda was also beginning to see red, which means she's really angry. She didn't in the least mind being accused of having done something that she actually wouldn't, she wouldn't have minded being accused of something she'd actually done. She could see justice in that. 
It was, however, a totally new experience for her of being accused of a crime that she had definitely not committed. She had absolutely nothing to do with that beastly creature in the gas. By golly, she thought, that rotten trunchful isn't going to pin this one on me. I didn't do it, she screamed. Look, you can see there. She's even got her fists out. She's really, really passionate that she didn't do it. Oh, yes, you did, the trunchful roared back. No one else could have thought up a trick like that. Your father was a right to warn me about you. The woman seemed to have lost control of herself completely. She was a raving like a man ma maniac. You are finished in this school, young lady, she shouted. You are finished everywhere. I shall personally see that you are put away in a place where you don't, not even the crows can land their droppings on you. I will probably never, you'll probably never see the light of day again. I'm telling you, I didn't do it, Matilda screamed. I've never seen a creature like that before in my life. You put a, a, a crocodile in my drinking water, the trunchbull yelled back. There's no worse crime in the world against the headmistress. Now sit down and don't say a word. Um, go and sit down at once. But I'm telling you, Matilda shouted, refusing to sit down. I'm telling you to shut up. Trunchbull roared. If you don't shut up at once and sit down, I shall remove my belt and let you have the end of them that with has the buckle. Slowly Matilda sat down. Oh, the rottenness of it all. Oh, the unfairness. How dare they expel her for something she hadn't done? Matilda had been getting herself angrier and angrier and angrier. So unbearably angry that something was bound to explode inside her very soon. The newt was still swimming in the tall grass of water. It looked horribly uncomfortable. The glass was not big enough for it. Matilda glared at the trunch ball. Oh, how she hated her. She glared at the glass with the newt in it. She longed to march up and grab the glass and tip the contents, the newt, out, out and all over the trunch ball's head. She trembled to think what the trunch ball would do to her if she did that. The trunch ball was sitting behind the teacher's um, table with a mixture of horror and fascination at the newt wriggling in the glass. Matilda's eyes were also riveted on the glass, and now, quite slowly, there began to creep over Matilda a most extraordinary, peculiar feeling. The feeling was mostly in her eyes, the kind of electricity seemed to be gathering inside them. A sense of power was brewing in those eyes of her. A feeling of great strength was settling deep inside her eyes. But there was another feeling which was something else altogether and which she couldn't understand like little flashes of lightning like little waves of lightning seemed to be flashing in and out of her eyes her eyeballs were beginning to get hot as though vast energy was building up somewhere inside them it was an amazing sensation she kept her eyes steady on the glass and now the power of concentration itself in one small part of each eye was growing stronger and stronger it felt as though millions of tiny little invisible arms with hands on them were shooting out of her eyes towards a glass she was staring at. Tip it, Matilda whispered. Tip it over. She saw the glass wobble. It actually tilted backwards a fraction of an inch and then righted itself back up again. She pushed it with all the millions of those invisible arms and hands that were reaching out of her eyes. feeling the power that was flashing straight into the back of the little black dots in the very centres of her eyeballs. Tip it, she whispered again. Tip it over. Once more the glass wobbled. She pushed it harder still, willing her eyes to shoot out more power. And then, very, very slowly, so slowly she could hardly see it happened, the glass began to lean backwards, further and further and farther and farther backwards, until it was balancing on just one edge of the base. And there it teetered for a few seconds before finally toppling over with a sharp tinkle on the desktop. The water in it and the um, squirming news splashed all over Miss Trunchbull's enormous bosom. The headmistress let out a yell that must have rattled every window pane in the building. And for the second time in the last few minutes, she shot out of her chair like a rocket. The new clutched desperately at the cotton smock where it had covered like a great um, covered a great chest, and there. It clung, its little uh, like little claw feet. The trunchbull looked down and saw it, and she bellowed even louder. With a swipe of her hand, 
she's setting the fleet, creature, creature flying across the classroom. It landed on the floor beside Lavender's desk and very quickly she ducked down and picked it up and she put it in her pencil pot for another time. A newt, she decided, was a very useful thing to have around. The trunch bill, her face, was more like boiled ham than ever, which means it's really pink. She was standing before the class, quivering with fury. Her massive bosom was heaving in and out um, with a splash of water down the front of it made a dark, wet patch which had probably soaked right through to her skin. Who did it? she roared. Come on, own up. Step forward. You won't escape this time. Whoever is responsible for this dirty job? Who pushed the, over the glass? No one answered. The whole room remained silent as a tomb. Matilda, she roared, it was you. I know it was you. Matilda was in the second row and she sat very still and said nothing. A strange feeling of serenity and confidence was sweeping over her all of a sudden. She found that she was frightened by no one in the world. With the power of her eyes alone, she had comp compelled a glass of water to tip over and spill its contents over that horrible headmistress. And anyone, anybody who could do any, and anybody who could do that could do anything. Speak up, you closet carnival. Um, roared the trunchbull. Admit you did it. Matilda looked right back into the flashing eyes of this infuriated female giant and said with total calmness, I have not moved away from my desk, Miss Trunchbull, since the lesson began. I can say no more. Suddenly the entire class seemed to rise up against the headmistress. She didn't move, they cried out. Matilda didn't move. Nobody moved. You must have knocked it over yourself. I most certainly did not knock it over myself, roared the trunchbull. How dare you suggest a thing like that? Speak up, Miss Honey. You must have seen everything. Who knocked over my glass? None of the children did, Miss Trunchbull, Miss Honey answered. I can vouch for that. No one has moved off his or her desk the whole time you've been here, except for Nigel, and he, was, um, he has not moved from the corner. Miss Trunchbull glared at Miss Honey, and Miss Honey met her gaze without flinching. I am telling you the truth, headmistress, she said. You must have knocked it over yourself without knowing it. That sort of thing is easy to do. I'm fed up with you useless bunch of midgets, roared the trunchbull. I refuse to waste any more of my precious time in here. And with that, she marched out of the classroom, slamming the door behind her. In the stunned silence that followed, Miss Honey walked up to the front of the class and stood behind her table. Phew, she said. I think we've had enough of school one day, don't you? The class is dismissed. You may all go out into the playground and wait for your parents to come and take you home. So that was a good chapter, wasn't it? And at the end, so Matilda was the one. She used the power in her eyes to knock over the glass. But no one knows it was Matilda, apart from Matilda. Miss um, Trunchbull suspects it was, but like everyone said, no one moved. So what's going to happen in this next chapter? Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till Monday to find out now. So have a nice weekend, everyone, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye.